have that removed um, based on all kinds of things that might have happened since then or maybe because of the circumstances at the time. It allows an employee that opportunity to do that. It also clarifies what goes in a file, that who has to see it and who knows and where the file is housed and all the coaching files will now be housed at the, at the central, central office. Tom, the question I have about this, and um, maybe you can help me with it, is uh, as far as I can tell, it doesn't address what a supervisor cannot keep in his desk. <clears throat> any, any piece of paper having to do with any employee in anyone's desk should, should be made available to that employee. Is that not right? No, For example, not necessarily. Okay. For example. I am the varsity basketball coach. I have gotten a letter, a negative letter, about um, one of my middle school coaches. And I have a, a file on my desk where I keep these letters. It comes time to do the evaluation. First of all, all right, so it comes time to do the evaluation. Do I know that I am not supposed to, in that evaluation, use anything that the person doesn't have access to? See, this is, mm -hmm. I'm kind of worried about... Well, nothing, that can go, nothing can be placed in the employee's file, um, permanent file, without the employee's But the knowledge. employee doesn't have a copy of or right. is knowledgeable of. Right. However, if that employee has a problem with us, and though he knows a letter was written, and someone in our school system has a copy of that letter, we've got a problem. Do you see what I'm saying? We, I cannot keep a copy of a letter Anywhere. And I think that's more of a, and I understand what you're saying, but I think as far as procedure is concerned, I, I think that's something that probably needs to be addressed. And if, if you do receive, if you're the supervisor and you receive a letter, um, if both the person who wrote that letter uh, needs to understand what you're going to do with that. Exactly. And, um, you know, I think sometimes there's a misunderstanding when people write letters, they think it goes into some sort of a file. Um, or the information can be used without their names, which is, somehow. And which I think it's something maybe as an, a leadership team we need to discuss that I think the procedure for that would be that we need to tell that person that you need to know that if this information means, means anything, I need to share who wrote the letter with the, with the person, otherwise it doesn't carry that much weight. And you don't see any part of that needing to be addressed here as part as of record-keeping policy? More of a procedure. Okay. The policy, uh, especially this piece, is a lot of access information that legally we are supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't even think it's clear right now. And, and I, don't, we have, I know with coaches we haven't been following this. So this will kind of force us to do that. Right. But I, but I think the trouble we ran into last year was the Walmart case. For whatever reason, if it exists in anybody's file, it's part of the person's record, whether that's, we like it or not. That's not, in, in the legal advice that I have on that is that has not that may not be so. Okay. At least in, edu in the educational arena, it hasn't been challenged as of yet. So I think everyone has a working file, and whether mm -hmm. that is legally um, something that the employee <coughs> can have, um, it's not really clear yet. Okay. Stay tuned. Yes. Okay. See that? We got through all of those. Um, the intent then is really on the first reading to go through these policies, uh, do exactly what we did, get questions answered, make suggestions, and so on. The second reading, which will come to us next month, is, is essentially um, a, ch a checking on those issues and items that we brought up this time, um, and we move to, uh, to approve them as policy. Yeah, we're yeah, unless they're too different, and then they have to Yeah, I think one of the things yeah. that... Uh, to present, you'll bring them back for a first reading. Yeah. Again. They're substantially... Right. There are some changes in this, and, and we kind of thought that there, there might be, um, so that our intent was, with, with this was maybe they might come back a third time. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, how many booster organizations or representatives of booster organizations were involved in developing the booster-related policies? Well, we had representatives from one. I'll, between all the people that were there on the committee, I'll bet four or five, maybe six booster groups were represented. There were two official booster representatives <coughs> that I think people on the committee have had some involvement, and many of them with an official involvement over, over, over time. 
but they were pretty, the booster people that were involved were, were pretty good and they were pretty active. Well, I'm, well, I'm just thinking that perhaps um, the booster-related policies, we should send a set of those to one representative of every existing booster group mm -hmm. so that they might uh, have a chance to look it over. Um, I have a sense that not every booster group talks to each other. Um, so while these four or five <coughs> folks or six folks <coughs> probably worked very diligently on it, uh, I'm just concerned that we might have a group of people come up and say, what is this all about? Mm -hmm. Because there are some changes uh, yeah. as far as procedures. Yeah. And there, there might be some good ideas out there floating around as well. Um, you know, I don't discount uh, the booster groups at all. Okay. Um, any other comments about these policies? Jenna, you all set with those? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Those, that's everything. Um, before we uh, have a motion to adjourn this evening's uh, meeting, I just want to cover some dates to remember. The school board workshop meeting um, is on, it's, it's uh, March 26th. I think uh, Jeff made a um, reference to that also. And uh, that has to do with the uh, high school science curriculum. And Kevin also advised uh, that we will doing, be doing some more budget discussion at that workshop. Uh, policy subcommittee meeting uh, is on Wednesday, April 3rd at noontime in the Jordan Conference Room. The finance subcommittee meeting on April 10th, 2002 is going to be at 6.30 in the Jordan Conference Room, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30 in the council chambers. I think it's April 9th. Say what? Isn't it April 9th? I know yeah. that only because I'm getting my hair cut on Tuesday, April <laughs> <laughs> You know this already? It is. That's right. If, if April 3rd is a Wednesday, then April 10th is also a Wednesday, so it should be April 9th. Sorry, that was an error. April, April 9th, the Tuesday. First okay. mistake we've ever made. So the correction there is um, finance subcommittee and regular school board meeting on April 9th, 2002. With that said, I would like to entertain a motion to adjourn this evening's, this evening's meeting. So moved by Kevin and seconded by Susan. Uh, questions, comments, seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.